In today's product highlights, we are going to go through the latest Marvis actions. The very first one we're going to look into is in the other actions section called persistently failing clients. This action is specific to wireless clients failing to authenticate. For example, when they try to do a dot one X authentication and thus continuously attempting to access the radius server as well as PSK or password based authentication where this device has been incorrectly entering a password, thus adding more airtime or congesting the wireless network. As always with every Marvis action, all the required information is present for the user to consume, such as the device name, MAC address, and in this case, this device tried to connect to more than one WLAN so that the user knows which single WLAN or multiple WLANs this client tried to connect to. The next one in the list is under layer one called bad cable. This is specific to a cable to which an AP is connected to and thus is applicable for any and every third party switch as well. What we are seeing here is this AP having a bad cable along with the port information on which it's connected to and finally the switch as well. The uniqueness of this action is no net new traffic or active tests are run to determine a bad cable. And this is purely based on baselining and monitoring the AP health and the AP behavior since the time it came online. Moving ahead, two net new actions under the AP section is coverage hole and insufficient capacity. Let's look at coverage hole first. What we see here is indications of frequent coverage issues around this AP, which highly likely is seen if the AP has been positioned correctly or if more APs are needed. This along with insufficient capacity is only seen after our radio management comes into effect and takes care of any coverage or capacity issue. Thus, after our AI driven RRM does its part, we bubble up issues which are beyond our control and require user intervention. In this instance, we can look at more details indicating where exactly this AP is and see the relation with respect to other neighboring APs which confirm or deny if there actually is a coverage issue. At this site, we have few APs and we also see there are unaffected APs as well to indicate that there isn't a coverage issue across the site. Else all the APs would show coverage issues and show up under the primary or the impacted neighbor AP list. Similarly, we have insufficient capacity talking about the need to either change configurations such as the bandwidth or adding more channels. And in this case, we see it's the same AP on a later date having capacity issues after the coverage issues were looked at and resolved and the similar map to look at where exactly is this impact seen and which neighboring APs confirm or deny the same. Now moving beyond the Wi-Fi realm, looking at the switch, in this case specifically the Juniper switch, we've introduced the action of a port flapping continuously. In this case, we do take into account a simple port down and up, which usually happens when a device connects. And this is currently reflecting a case where the port is continuously flapping, thereby not only causing a poor experience for the device which is connected on the other end, but also having high resource consumption for the switch, which can be detrimental to other devices connected on the switch. 
Here too, we show all the required information in terms of the port, the client which is connected, and the VLAN, if in case it did communicate and we know the VLAN ID. And finally, under gateways, we have the bad WAN uplink action, as the name suggests, talking about which WAN devices out on the network, along with the interfaces, specifically the uplink, is having congestion, thereby showing that it's detrimental to other devices in the downstream. This completes the latest Marvis actions, and be, be in tune for the following actions showing up in the next few weeks or months.